Hello. When I found that Blender Nation accepted website header submissions, I thought what can I make with grease pencil that could make a good header. So I decided to paint the most overrated painting of all time, the Mona Lisa. Today I will share how I made this piece and what I learned from it. Before we start, please consider buying the Blend project from my Gumroad. It took me one month to finish and will cost you $7 only. You can do anything you like with it and support the free content on this channel. Link in the description. So I started by downloading an ultra mega HD picture of the painting from Wikipedia and two things struck me. One, the level of details on the painting when you zoom in, like the hair strands here and the embroidery on the dress. This made me realize that it wasn't that overrated after all. Two, the level of damage represented by the multitude of cracks and the fading and spoiling of colors in some places. I even read somewhere that the girl had eyebrows originally, which made me guess that she had eyelashes too. The damage made replicating the painting harder because some details were lost in it. I imported the image to Blender as a plane and decided which part I will paint because the dimensions of the Blender Nation header are very different from the original painting. I then drew the outlines with the pencil brush with 100 pixels radius and opacity pressure disabled. This same brush I used for most of the painting. After the outlines I tried to choose a color for the skin, hair and background and used them as fills. I put the girl fills and background fills in separate layers. I then added a layer called brush and started painting the girl. I put the reference on the side and split the viewport to have it always in sight. I added a layer with horizontal lines that acted as guides, so that I can align the reference with my painting. But I should have made a grid with horizontal and vertical lines. I used the eyedropper to pick some colors from the reference, but I edited most colors to be a little bit more vibrant. For the eyedropper to work properly, you have to tweak some settings as explained in a previous short video. I painted some lighter and darker colors and blended them using the eyedropper drag technique I explained in another short you can find in the top right or the description. I repeated this process a lot to make the gradient smoother and smoother and not being able to use the E shortcut on the viewport to pick colors wasted a lot of my time. For the background, I moved the reference under my painting and finally made a grid in my guides layer. I duplicated the grid on top of the reference and put it in similar position. Now the work is split to smaller, easier to do squares, it's more organized, there's less chance to mess up angles and proportions, and I can split the viewport to put a grease pencil square in one area, a reference square in another, and the painting in another bigger area. I started by drawing raw fill colors in my background fills layer with the fill material. Then I made a background brush layer and started painting. My mistake here was that I zoomed too much on the reference, painted a lot of unnecessary details and lost the big picture. So halfway I zoomed out and started all over again. Since Blender is vector based, which means that the resolution of your painting is basically unlimited, you can be tempted to zoom more and more and add more and more details. Decide the resolution of the picture or video you want to render and paint enough details for that resolution or else you will never finish the piece. Now was the time to blend the colors with the airbrush and I did that in a layer called Blur. I also used the eyedropper generously here. I used the airbrush to add a little bit of highlights to the hair but in a separate layer because I used the Add Blend mode instead of the regular one. I lastly added some magical light in a separate layer, again with the airbrush and this time with the Divide Blend mode. So everything in this piece was done inside Blender and without using the built-in compositor. It took me one month working on it in my spare time and I must mention that I'm no experienced painter, this might be the fourth or fifth painting I do in my entire life. For the building animation, I used pass indexes and keyframing to order and time the building. I explained this technique in a video linked above and in the description. 
If you have any questions, please let me know. Get the finished painting and animation file for $7 from Gumroad. Like the video, subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in another video. Peace.